Assalamualaikum and greetings to everyone. In this video, me, Aimina Zoha and my group members, Shasha Ariana, Sakina Humaira and Siti Humaira, with the guidance of our teacher, Puan Afika Binti Abdul Rashid, we present to you about our bi biology project based learning about hemodialysis. First of all, I will show you the table of contents. Okay, moving on to the objective, which is to understand the procedure and importance of hemodialysis for patients with kidney disease. Now, let's focus on the introduction. So, what is hemodialysis? Hemodialysis, also spelled hemodialysis, H-A-E-M-O-D-I-A-L-Y-S-I-S, or simply dialysis, is a process of purifying the blood of a person whose kidneys are not working normally. Next, we will tell you a bit about the history of hemodialysis. The history of dialysis dates back to the 1940s. The first type of dialyzer, then called the artificial kidney, was built in 1943 by Dutch physician Willem Koff. Koff had first gotten the idea of developing a machine to clean the blood after watching a patient suffer from kidney failure. When his invention was completed, he attempted to treat over a dozen patients with acute kidney failure over the next two years. Although only one treatment turned out successful, he continued to experiment in improving his design. However, Koff's device only treated acute kidney failure and not end-stage renal disease or ESRD. Dr. Bali Scribner, a professor of medicine at the University of Washington, developed a way for ESRD patients to receive treatment through an access point in their arm. In 1962, Scribner opened the first official dialysis clinic for patients. He eventually developed a portable dialysis machine that allowed patients to receive dialysis treatment at home. By 1973, 40% of dialysis patients were doing their treatments at home. For information, we have added some additional information about hemodialysis. So, the first picture shows the hemodialysis process. The second picture shows the symptoms when hemodialysis is needed. If you have headaches, blood in the urine, back or side pain, high blood pressure, frequent ur urinary tract infections, and abdominal swelling, you need to see the doctor immediately. Then, we have William Johankov in the picture, who is a pioneer of hemodialysis artificial heart as well as in the entire field of artificial organs and the last is the hemodialysis machine which is used during treatments next we will present our discussions first question what are the reasons of renal failure caused by caused a person to undergo hemodialysis high blood pressure and diabetes are the two most common causes of kidney failure they can also become damaged from physical injuries, diseases, or other disorders. Other than that, kidney failure also can be caused by health conditions that can cause impaired blood flow to the kidneys. Second question, how does hemodialysis work? Hemodialysis is a procedure where a dialysis machine and a special filter called an artificial kidney or a dialyzer are used to clean your blood. To get your blood into the dialyzer, the doctor needs to make an assess or entrance into your blood vessels. This is done with minor surgery usually to your arm. Third question, why would someone need hemodialysis? Individuals need dialysis if their kidneys no longer remove inner waste and fluid from their blood to keep them healthy. This usually happens when an individual has only 10 to 15% of their kidney function left. An individual may have symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, swelling, and fatigue. Question number 4. What is the effect on patients who do not receive treatment? Without dialysis treatment, 
toxic waste state and fluid will build up in the body, making the patient feel more tired. The fluid build up can make it more difficult to breathe, but your doctor can prescribe diuretics or a treatment called ultrafiltration to remove fluid and make breathing easier for you. Missing dialysis treatment places you at risk for building up high levels of these two minerals, hypothesium, which can lead to heart problems including arrhythmia, heart attack and death, high phosphorus, which can weaken your bones over time and increase your risk for heart disease. Lastly, how long can a patient live without dialysis? This varies from a person to person. People who stop dialysis may live anywhere from one day to several weeks, depending on the amount of kidney function they have left and their overall medical condition. In conclusion, to avoid kidney failure, we must take care of our health and practice a healthy lifestyle. We have to eat healthy food regularly, such as vegetables and fruits. We should also do a lot of exercises to maintain our health. That's all from us. Thank you.